Searchlights had been introduced in the German army before 1914. They were mainly for use in fortress warfare to illuminate the battlefield. Tactical use under field conditions only shortly before the outbreak of the First World War. As late as 1913, these searchlights were considered sufficient for the airship. In conjunction with balloon cannons, they were primarily intended for the most important Rhine crossings at night. From 1918 onwards, attempts were made in cooperation with fighter planes to enable bright night hunting at an altitude of 2000 to 3000 meters. With the help of searchlights, October 1918 at least 51 enemy aircrafts were shot down. At the end of the war, the army already had 718 anti-aircraft searchlights, all of which were destroyed except of a few in the Königsberg fortress. During the Second World War, German anti-aircraft searchlights played a crucial role in German air defense. They were used in cities, industrial plants and military bases to locate and illuminate Allied bomber units. This made it easier for the anti-aircraft guns to target and shoot down the aircraft. The following searchlights were introduced to the troops. The 60cm anti-aircraft searchlight 36, the 150 anti-aircraft searchlight 34 and 37, and the 200cm anti-aircraft searchlight 43. Small anti-aircraft searchlights, such as the 60cm anti-aircraft searchlight, were only suitable to a limited extent for use by light and medium anti-aircraft artillery. The illumination range was 4000 to 7000 meters. Due to its size, the searchlight was very mobile and could be placed anywhere with a truck trailer. A power generator with 8 kilowatts and a crew of 4 men were required to put it into operation. The searchlight operator was responsible for the functional safety and controlled the lightning activity. The directional gunner was responsible for locating and searching for potential flight targets and constantly tracking the searchlight. The lamp keeper ensured that the lamp worked perfectly and, for example, had to operate the lamp crank for collecting and scattered light in addition to feeding the coals. The machine operator was solely responsible for the power supply from the machine set. The searchlight was mainly used for light air defense until the end of the war. The 150cm searchlights 34 and 37 were often operated by students of the Hitler Youth or flak weapon helpers. The firing range was 14,800 meters and the firing height 10,600 meters. It was connected to a 24 kilowatt hour power generator and could be transported on four wheels. The 200 cm anti aircraft searchlight 43 was introduced at the end of the war and was connected to a 120 kilowatt generator. The 200 cm anti aircraft searchlight was fixed to the ground and had a range of 13,000 to 15,000 meters with a crew up to eight men. Both the 200 cm and the 150 cm searchlight were also equipped with a Dunkelsuchgerät 41. It was an infrared night vision device that enabled German soldiers to see in the dark or in poor visibility conditions by making infrared light visible. The beam of light from the searchlights were also used to illuminate enemy aircraft flying in formation in order to provide the air defense with highly visible targets. The illumination of enemy aircraft over large cities worked so well that the German Air Force even used day fighters to combat the bombers, Wilde Sau. As a rule, the light cones of five searchlights, four 150s and a 200 in the middle as a guide beam, stationed within a radius of around 5 km were bundled together. During the Second World War, the closest network of such searchlights was around the capital city Berlin. Anti-aircraft searchlights were therefore an important means of reconnaissance for enemy aircraft in German history.